In 2012, Z1 Motorsports was about 10 years old uh, under the name Z1 Motorsports. And uh, we'd been in this facility uh, that we're currently still in eight, about eight years. And at that time, we were uh, obviously much smaller than we are today. We were probably about, I don't know, about 20 employees at that time. We could look back and check. Um, we were getting more into uh, road racing and uh, just our, myself and some of the other staff was uh, really getting, getting hooked, on the, hooked on the track and addicted to that sort of thing. We would approve what we could do and um, <clears throat> Nissan or Nissan Motorsports had just released this Spec Z program where they were going to build uh, a program in conjunction with NASA, uh, National Auto Sport Association. You want good racing, right? That's the concept. And I think the whole thing when NASA and Nissan were looking at spec racing with the Z was that they wanted to bring something fresh and maybe faster to uh, to the racers, the people that are grassroots and doing this on you know day to day. They wanted to find support and you know give the Z some love because otherwise you were trying to run in some of these other groups and build an ST car. Or, you know, T2 car, wherever you're going to class it and build it out. Good wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing is what people wanted. Let's just face it. Russell and I were sitting out uh, in his office one night late after work, and uh, we uh, we had looked into this Spec Z NASA series that was running, and um, we we kind of decided why not do one. Um, so we started looking for a car, and uh, we happened to hop on an uh, IAA auction. Um, for insurance claims and Hurricane Sandy had just hit New Jersey and New York so it seemed like the entire East Coast was flooded and we knew there was an opportunity to probably pick up some cars and uh, we got on to some of the auction sites and we picked up a couple a couple 350Zs. We uh, we looked and we found a, found a Nismo with like 40,000 miles on it that looked to be in great shape. We believed on the online auction that it just received small water damage, but it had been totaled out by the insurance company. Basically put a starter motor, um, a clutch and flywheel into, and a few other small things, and it was ready to go. But other than that, the car fired right up, and it was a beautiful black Nismo, um, low miles, and um, number 357, actually. So everything just kind of fell in place. We're like, wow, this is a very straight, nice car. We hate to uh, turn it into a race car, but that's the most sensible thing to do here. To convert a, a street car into a spec car, you would remove uh, lots of interior stuff. You get a cage in it, you add a fire system, you add a, and safely mount a race seat. You add window nets, you have to keep driver contained and, you know, stuff out from coming in should there be an incident it's a big deal the upgrades required for the spec z series or are allowed for the spec series rather are, are mild by z1's terms very very mild and almost frustrating but the whole point is to be very creative and um, and do things that are within the rules or obviously you know creative ways to uh figure out where the rules uh can be uh, can be interpreted differently or bent or those sorts of things. We got creative with how to do this on uh, as best budget as possible, and so we found another Spec Z racer that was in uh, who had wrecked his car in mid Ohio, and uh, his his car was still wrecked inside of the trailer, and he had an F250, um, and I think he uh, I think he had ABS failure, and cartwheeled over the top of a fence, um, and I. Think I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure his wife maybe has said that's enough racing. Um, so we uh, we picked up the truck, the trailer, and the, the the wrecked vehicle, which had most of the parts on it that we needed to build this car. Um, we only had to buy the additional safety equipment, fire suppression, and some other things. We uh, we installed a fair amount of Z1 parts, a fair amount of Nissan Motorsports Nismo parts, which are required in some instances. And um, it, took, um, it took a few months 
to, to properly build a to race to properly build a race car and cage it out to do all the safety and those sorts of things and to do it right it, it took some time and obviously that's not our primary job we have orders to ship out and customers cars to uh, to build and uh, repair and those sorts of things but we uh, we poured into it and we had it done in uh, in time for the the NASA Spec Z series to start uh, season to start and uh, we were able to run some races in Road Atlanta in 2013 even though we um, in the, in the spring of 2013 and Hurricane Sandy was fall of uh, 2012, uh, October 2012. So we did, we, we, this car came together in relatively short order. <laughs> but why 23? Um, Michael Jordan, um, obviously better than LeBron James. Uh, but no, seriously, it's um, in, in Japan, uh, in Japanese language, uh, the, the number two is Ni and number three is San. So all the iconic Nismo Nissan race cars in Japan are always numbered 23 as a result. Um, and for us, most of our, our race cars follow, follow that suit as well. It's, uh, it's the number we all wanted in high school. Uh, well, if you're in your 40s, I guess. Its actual first event that we took it to was uh, Roebling Road. Um, we just did a track day with it just for a shakedown. And uh, we, we, had, we had just put everything together. Um, we had taken it off and got the cage in it. We, um, uh, we got it back, finished up assembling it, got it all, uh, all buttoned up and ready, loaded onto the trailer, um, and, uh, and, and the truck had, a, had some type of problem and wouldn't start. We ended up not leaving until about one o'clock in the morning. And it was uh, Russell, Shannon, and I uh, driving down to meet um, to meet the, the driver and the rest of the individuals that were down at Roebling Road. And we pulled up uh, as the sun was rising at 6 a.m. And um, we had to be at a driver's meeting at seven. And then we went and did, we went out on track at this first scheduled time and the car did well, no overheating. Um, performed well. We had to change some alignment specs and things like that. Uh, but overall, the first event with it was was pretty flawless. In both years, we attended the uh, national uh, NASA National Championship races. The first year was in uh, in Utah at Miller Motorsports Park, where uh, there was quite a field of competitors there, and it was a very uh, um, it was a it was a great weekend of racing. Gavin and Russell drove it out, um, and then um, some of us flew out. Uh, our, our driver Joe um, ran the race. We ended up having uh, we ended up getting snagged on the front, uh, and we had to replace the bumper. Car was in an accident. Uh, front bumper got knocked off, which was a little painful, uh, considering that the car was uh, unscathed up to that point. But uh, you know, it's racing, and things happen ran the race the next day and out of, I, I want to say that there was 11 or 12 cars that, that race, uh, we placed uh, third uh, overall um, and lots of factors that went into that. Uh, being at that high of an altitude in Utah and that dry of air, um, we had to do some retuning, had to play around with that, as well as being on a track that we had never been on before. Uh, you, you didn't get a whole lot of practice. so. The guy, that in, the guy that won that race was from that region and had been doing that there for 20 years. Um, so very, very challenging, but um, then uh, one of the technicians and I loaded up and we drove it back and uh, we had a NASA event the next weekend in Atlanta. Um, so we had to get the car back to get the bumper replaced and get everything fixed. Um, so we drove nonstop from Utah back to Atlanta. And uh, I recall very clearly uh, getting to the point where I can barely speak English around Chattanooga um, and Kyle took over and finished it out for us. We got back here about Tuesday at about four o'clock in the morning. Uh, so it was quite challenging. The following year had a great, another great season. The national championships that year were actually at Road Atlanta. We had a diff overheat in the middle of the race. Brian Kleeman was racing for us that year. We had a, a, a few issues that were unforeseen during the race, but um, 
it, had we had one more lap, I feel as though we probably would have been able to, uh, to take first place uh, if we just had a, a tad bit more time, but there was a yellow flag, slowed everything down, um, got us bundled back up together, but it was still, uh, still quite a challenge. And that year, we, uh, we, we pulled off second place. Uh, the, Pell one, the Pellegrini, Jay Pellegrini, with his fleet of Spec Z's, uh, had a great race and uh, won, won that year. And uh, the next year after that, uh, the series started, uh, the participation started to taper off a little bit. The other competitors that were in the Southeast region kind of dwindled out. One sold his car, one wrecked his car, um, another one was traveling from Nashville, and another one from Raleigh. So there just wasn't really as enough to, to go and compete in order to get the contingency dollars to try and support the habit of racing. <laughs> So what could we do with it? We could actually, in my eyes, make sense of this car for once, like to the highest degree. We could take it beyond spec. We could start to actually upgrade it. I mean, all the things we were doing for our own cars, our customer cars, you know, our friends were upgrading the cars way beyond, you know, on power than what we were allowed to do in spec. And I, uh, I think that that was really just kind of crazy for us that we <laughs> kept doing this thing. We couldn't upgrade it further. So, so that's what we did. We upgraded the intakes, you know, with Z1 intakes, we put Z1 headers on it, we tuned this thing to the max, you know, you want to make another 25, you know, 30 more horsepower, like, okay, that was things we could uncork and do. So this car started seeing a lot more miles and became just a, I don't know, a track beast just for testing product. The car has been through numerous Z1 products. I think it has our uh, all our two-piece brake rotors, for instance, um, our Z1 R200 differential. This thing has seen probably more than five different clutch kits. When we did the um, CSC elimination kit, we revised it on HR for this. We started, started out on 370, did it on here. Oh man, differentials, gears, subframe collars. I mean, we could go on and on. Z1, you know, we could say motor mounts, all these things. The car has had uh, an enormous amount of track miles on it, uh, sometimes almost all day non-stop and, uh, and never miss a beat. And that's one of the great things about the car is just the reliability of it and the ability just to go enjoy this car lap after lap after lap and still be, you know, competitive, quick car on the racetrack and uh, it just never gives up. Um, we take it to a lot of events and uh, load up. Uh, customers in it and kind of give them a feel of what it's like to be around the track doing some charity fundraising. Uh, you know, customers come and pay, you know, 25, 30 bucks. We go run around, do two or three laps. Um, and there's been several times where uh, we've had four cars doing that <laughs> with drivers and, uh, and we, we get out of the car maybe 20 minutes out of every two hours um, and go all day long with that. Uh, do ride-alongs with Z Nationals. Um, just take it to the track and sometimes have fun. This thing will run like all day. I mean, they hot swap this car. It barely shuts off to get refueled and swap, you know, passengers in for charity laps and it just runs all day long. It's a clockwork, never ever stops. It doesn't break. It's really reliable and a great pace uh, car. And I would love to see some of those people chime in if they've been in a ride with somebody in this car. Uh, and can speak on that, you know, like good experience and uh, generally for good cost. The best thing about this car is, is that it, it's, it's only ever broke once and that was like a transmission fork. It just keeps going and going and going and it's just bulletproof. Uh, and and that's, what, that's what makes this car so great. Obviously in taking it to the track, we continue to test out our product line on the car as one of many cars we take to the track, but it's a way to prove the products that we're engineering, designing, building, and selling. And, uh, you know, it's one of the many platforms we use for doing that. And it's, it's great to be able to take the car out and, and run all day, take uh, obviously all sorts of measurements regarding whatever product it might, you know, be applicable to. And uh, continue to uh, develop, design, and refine our product line through doing that sort of thing. And that's, that's part of the reason why, uh, why we love what we do here at Z1 is we get to uh, design cool, great products and uh, hopefully have a little fun doing it. So.